Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. Um, today we are going to go over my new craft and sewing room. So this is a great start for anyone who's like starting out. So just a little bit about this room real quick before we go through everything. Um, it took a little doing from my daughter, Sarah Ray Vargas. Some of you might know who she is. Um, to finally convince me that I don't need to have three spare guest rooms in my house when all our kids live in the state. So, after much to do and some emotional going throughs for myself, I came to agree with her. <laughs> and it totally made sense. Plus, I have always loved to sew and crochet and craft but I've never, ever in my entire 57 years of my life had a space of my own. So here we go. We're going to get started. Most of this stuff you're going to see is from an Ikea. With, and I'll tell you where it's from when we, when we get there. But anyway, this room is 12 by 14. Um, used to be one of the bedrooms. Um, we took the door off of the, off of the closet and it is also part of... And it is 14 feet in length it's from there. And I think probably about six feet across. We'll get in there in a few moments. But anyway, as you enter the door here, um, this is normally behind the door because, um, just a little side note, I ran the Chicago Marathon in 2019, me and my chubby little self. And um, I finished, it took me forever, but I finished. So that's all that matters, right? So. I wanted to finally put this up somewhere. So most of the time it is behind the door. And so most of the time my door swung open. <laughs> so we don't see it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm proud of it if nobody else is. So as you enter in to the left here, I have two sewing machines currently that I use um, on a regular. So one is my serger. And this is a serger I actually picked up uh, secondhand from somebody who I uh, didn't, wasn't using it anymore. I actually got it for like $75. So, and it works like a charm. The beauty about sergers, if nobody's ever, if you don't have one, is a lot of them, they, they literally, so all they have to do is pop this little baby open. And it literally tells you right there how to thread it. So, don't let yourself be intimidated by a serger. So, they are awesome. If you want to have that, like, store, I always call it like the store-bought seam kind of look. And then this is uh, my um, other machine, and it is a Viking, or, or right there you go, 300, oh, Scandinavia 300 right there. This one is also a small embroidery machine. Um, you have to put the embroidery designs on a disc. Um, I mainly use it for sewing. Occasionally I'll go through the headache of putting a design on a disc and using it for an embroidery machine, so. Anyway, it's, I love it. It's a great machine. And so that's, so now I have them both out here and I don't have to um, swap them out or anything. They're no longer obviously on my dining room table, which is where I used to put things when I was doing a craft project, you know, in the middle of the living space and everybody's way. So the table is from Ikea. It's got these tripod legs on it, um, which I really like. I got this basket and this basket is kind of like, not really a trash basket. I use it more for scraps in case uh, you know i never know what i might end up doing so i decided i was just going to save the small the small those are like tiny scraps um that could possibly be used for you know the grandkids coming over and doing some little project you know they like sewing up little tiny things and stuff like that so and then next to that i have a, this uh chest of drawers uh, i think to believe yep yeah, there's a nine chest um they're from ikea and over here in the top drawer because I don't want anybody to get hurt and I don't like anybody playing with my scissors. I have all my scissors. I have pinking shears back there. I have small scissors. Um, my, my rotary cutters. I have um, small hand, you know, small scissors for the little ones. Teeny tiny ones for there. And, yeah. And then, of course, you need a little decor. This one here came from Michael's. And then one of my granddaughters, uh, she made me this for... Um, I think for my birthday, and I was like, I couldn't wait to get my sewing room done so I could put that in there. Um, I just love how she, you see how she wrote sew. 
It is adorable. And then everybody likes a good scent. So I have my, uh, my reed thing with the oils. But anyway, back to the drawers. Top one, scissors. Next one is these clips. I would love to have more of these clips, but they are expensive. <laughs> it's like, but I'll get there, slowly but surely. Random stapler in case I need to, you know, I make my own pattern or whatever, and I need to, like, staple directions or something, something. So have those in there. This drawer here, I just started putting, these little guys are for my sewing feet. I don't actually have very many, but hopefully, you know, now that I'm, I have my own sewing room and stuff, I'm going to hopefully be able to start getting more feet because I have the complete book for this machine here and it this machine can do magic okay like it's ridiculous what it can do it can pleat for you in three different sizes um it's just it can get it's just ridiculous what it can do if you use it right <laughs> so yeah so back on to let's see now we're on drawer four I have thread here you're gonna find out I got a lot of thread this is like my oranges and yellows right now I'm um, in the process of still getting things for the for thread and then back here because I don't use this much those are the little discs for the embroidery um, and my needles for my machine so these are things I hopefully wouldn't need to get out a lot because hopefully I don't break many needles and like I said I don't embroider very often anymore and then this is another thread drawer um, I will get something for these threads at some point because I don't like them just to be loose like that and then more thread. I started um, getting thread for my surgery colored thread. I used to always do it in white, but um, I'm getting, you know, I want to start, you know, now that I'm doing projects, I want to be able to have the option for other things, other colors, and not just white. Uh, of course, seam rippers, uh, tape measures, uh, marking up uh, your notches and then your stuff on your patterns. And then down here, we got uh, the more thread. <laughs> I got every color of thread you can imagine. And bobbins, bobbin holders down here. This one is actually still empty. Well, it's got a couple things, so I wear things in that empty as well. So we got room to grow there. So this is kind of like what you'll need at the sewing machine type thing, you know. So that's why I got those next there. Then I got a chair here. And then, and then we, in the center of the room, coming out from the windows, I have, and so I put in, um, Speaking of the windows, I put in light filtering shades because I wanted this room to have light. And um, where in the rest of the house, they're not light filtering. So, because this room actually does get really hot in the summertime. But we are actually going to be calling somebody in to put a ceiling fan up there with some more light. So, it will be awesome. So, this butcher block we actually got from Home Depot was about four hundred dollars and my husband sealed it many 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 a time sanded it and sealed it and then what we have underneath holding it are some adjustable ikea legs and it, i mean it works like a charm like so and uh it's butted up there and then we have some more ikea drawers down here this here is just some uh, extra material from a project that i was working on and then so this side here is sewing stuff more like if i'm gonna be doing something so started getting some uh more uh, tracing out stuff this is when i'm going to cut something in paper obviously i do some of my own patterns this ironically was a pair of pajamas that i cut out probably 10 years ago and, I, and they're ready to get sewn together but i haven't done it yet and I think these two are still so I have a lot of room for growth in here so and but it's very functional for me right now like I don't feel like I'm missing anything but I know as I get more into it and I do it more often I'm gonna need room and so what I did uh, we made this little cubby shelf up here for on the table so that the table wouldn't wobble so we got it I mean every table's got a little bit of wobble but this thing is really sturdy and so we made this little cubby thing here. I got these drawers, these here from Target. And so they just, so I figured what I might do is these are like for projects in, um, that are happening right now. Like I'm hoping that the, you know, if any of the granddaughters or grandsons want to come over and they want to work on a project and they got to leave, they can kind of fold it up and put it away. So, and then maybe at some point, 
I'll be putting something on here. I'm not sure. Pegboard, something. You know, like I said, I don't want to go crazy. I just, I like things to be neat. And then I don't want to have too many options. <laughs> I've still got a lot of storage space. And then as we come around, so this side, you know, is obviously for the other worker. Oh, and this little guy I picked him up at Target a couple weeks ago. That would be for, you know, was, you know, my secondary person that's here work on a project, but then actually this little guy, I'm gonna make him some cute little outfits. So I know it's kind of weird, but that's just me. And then up here on top of the table, I have some, I love, we, my husband and I love plants. We got this beauty from Texas when we were there and the aloe vera and the other little one and stuff. So we, we love, we love our plants. So of course I got them on towel cause I wanna make sure I don't ruin my table. But uh, continuing on with the drawers. Uh, this here drawer, so this here side has got my yarn on the on this back wall, I'll show you in a minute. So this is stuff that would be my yarn stuff. Um, so knit needles, crochet needles, um, things to pull through, you know, finishing tools for crocheting and stuff like that is in there. And then this here, some loop work. Yeah. And then, like I said, I, you're going to see a lot of stuff is new because, like I said, I... I have this passion and I used to just buy stuff and then it would get put somewhere and then the rest of them are empty for right now. But these two have worked out great, these two. And then we actually hooked um, these two drawer systems together. So, like I said, right behind that, this is gonna be my yarn system right now. I just got a little cute little yarn bowl up there and another little yarn decor thing. Um, at some point, they will once I get more yarn, I'm not in a hurry, you know, I need to use when I start doing projects before I start accumulating more. Because it's not about just accumulating it, it's about doing something with what you got. So, um, but my plan is, I love these little um, crisscross things here, and they came from Ikea. Uh, my plan would be that I'll end up with one up there and one up there, and potentially one over here. But right now I have my crocheting and knitting books over there. My darling granddaughter Nala, she made me this little bunny rabbit. Um, and then down here, I think we actually have a couple things that don't actually belong in this area. Yeah, there's ribbon. That would be more sewing stuff. And then underneath here is, uh, oh, that's yarn. Like thin yarn. So, and then in here we have a yarn uh, project that I was working on, an afghan. So, that's in there. So, my plan is I was really hoping to get another one of these here but Ikea doesn't seem to have them anymore so I was hoping to get two more because I have two so I might do some switching out I'm not sure and then on the bottom there um, I'm probably going to put in a couple of these shelf things like this right here this is an insert from Ikea yeah just that because I don't want my my yarn down that far on the ground or I'll just move my these types of things down there yeah, but this is um, six high, two wide. Everything's hooked to the wall and anchored because I obviously don't want anybody to get hurt. So most time it's just going to be me in here, but still, um, you know, I'm not trying to have a disaster happen with somebody. So so that's that wall. And then this um, little guy here is actually a trash can. Um, my One of my sons had given it to me, had it made and given it to me a long time ago. It was in our kitchen, our old kitchen. Didn't quite go with things, but then when we decided the color, I had my son, my husband, um, he painted it all out for me. So now I have a cute little um, matching garbage can there. So I can keep, you know, without it being obvious, you know. And like I said, some of these flat spaces like here, they might end up getting, you know, some hooks on them at some point, you know, the little command hooks or something if I see the need. Yeah, so then we go over and we're on the other side here. And um, like I said, so I might not have said it, but my mom, she was uh, like a master seamstress and crochet and knit, this woman. My kids really remember her sitting in her sewing room, just not in her sewing room, I'm sorry. My kids remember her just sitting in her chair, watching TV, constantly crocheting or knitting. That was just her thing. And she always did it. When she passed away, I got a ton of her knitted projects, um, crocheted projects. And one of them is, um, and I have like four, is uh, this little bed doll. So I decided to put this shelf up here because the wall was kind of big and blank. 
So I put this shelf up and I don't really want it for storage. Um, so Sarah, my daughter, she mentioned, hey, why don't you just put something up there about your mom? And so I did. So I got this, uh, I put a bed doll up there that she made. And then that actually is my mother's sewing machine. And interestingly enough, my mother passed away 26 years ago. I got her sewing machine. I had never, ever turned it on. And when I brought it in here, I plugged it in and it was running like a charm. Actually, it's, it seems a little more powerful than what we have these days. But hey, who? Um, yeah, so that's her. And then what I'm planning to do is I got to which I haven't done yet, I'm going to put a picture and a frame up there of my mom. So that's going to be all, you know, why this is all happening, you know. Okay, so continue on down here. We got another one of these Calyx systems, and this one is up on the little legs that they offer. And then um, it's, it's eight uh, cubbies, and then I have a four cubby one next to it. I wanted the legs, but Ikea is, seems to be out of the legs, like forever but this here little station is more sewing stuff and a little bit of quilting so all these here are just they're probably all like about a yard or under so these are when the kids come over and they're like they just have some random project you know they're always trying to make something for dolls or something like that so these are great so that they don't get into the regular material the bigger stuff and start chopping off chopping all that up but anyway, that's, so I have two packs, two, two things full of that for them and myself as well when I need to do little things. And then one of my dad granddaughters also made this. And so we got a little, well, it's a piece of fuzz. Oh, I was like, what is on there? And so then this is a little, one of those systems I told you. Oops, there's some little things, so things don't rub, scrub on the wall. Uh, this is an insert here. And then... I already had this container. I know it doesn't match, but you know this has just got like embellishments and stuff like that in there. I will on my next IKEA run get um, a matching container, and then I have my quilting books here. Um, we'll see how that goes because I'm following some of you YouTubers on quilting, and I've never quilted a thing in my life, but in my mind I've always wanted to quilt. So we shall see. I've been watching tips and tricks and all. And then down here, right at the moment, I have my patterns. I have a lot of patterns. So these on this side are all like um, clothing patterns. And then these are all like project patterns. So I'm sure at some point I'll have more. And then we go in here. Uh, these doors also from Ikea. They can, they're made for these systems. And then I have these are just like more Ikea storage containers. Obviously I need one for, obviously I need one for these. Um, that I haven't gotten yet. I've gotten these, I bought this stuff, this tape stuff since I got this all put together. But like this one's got buttons in it. And we got pins and needles. And what else? We got um, bias tape back here. And that other one has got, oh, uh, like a, a rivet. Uh, the, the last one's got the rivet machine in it. So, and all the rivets. This one doesn't have anything. Um, not sure what I'm going to put in there yet. I'll put another system. Oh, and these adorable little doorknobs, handle, handle. I didn't like the knobs that came with it. Um, I got those actually from Goodwill for like 50 cents. They were brand new, but still, they're so cute. And then this is empty right now. This one, oh, this is all my Scandinavia, my Viking machine stuff for embroidery also you know the instruction booklet it talks about all the feet that i have for my machine and everything yeah okay and then over here we have this is like all gonna be this little guy is gonna be for all the little um the small sewing things like raw i'll never have like a ton of them so this is uh snaps and stuff and this is these little like little hook things here these are belt belt loop things purse loops yeah and then i get some what are those called carabiners yeah i have some projects in there for some of this stuff so yeah but anyway i'll probably end up labeling it out with the label printer so that i don't think you know bounce each one of them up and down when i go in yeah, and then in here we have more. These also came from Ikea. This is kind of my color scheme here. This uh, greenish, if you will. 
big piece of stuff here. And, uh, so I'm using these and the white ones that were down there in that other drawer, um, mainly for some of my storage. So this one here is um, elastic and Velcro here. And then the next one is oh, my zippers. I got a lot of zippers. So, yeah. The cool thing about zippers, I mean, so long as they're long enough, you can make zippers shorter. You can actually buy zipper tape, and then they send you the little end pieces, and you put the zipper together yourself. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but I have a friend that I work with who does it all the time. That's what she does. And then this is going to be my Cricut station. Uh, this is going to be a new learning experience for me because I've never used a Cricut. So I'm going to obviously be watching lots of Cricut stuff and videos and everything from all you folks. See if I can learn how to use that. But I think this is a great beginner's uh, sewing and craft room. You know, where I've, it's pretty simple. Hopefully, I got a lot of room to grow, I feel like, you know. Uh, plenty of space for more yarn. I got plenty of space for more sewing stuff. Um, Cricut areas really got nothing right at the moment. There's a little bit of uh, the rolls of whatever you're gonna cut in that in this one here. So, and then my Cricut boards here on the side. That's just tape. I mean, this is just paint in case I decide to want to match something up. So I think. Overall, it's just, it's very pleasing. It's very relaxing. Um, and, yeah. and I can't wait. Well, like I said, we're going to get a light up there. We already have the fan. Well, actually, it's in the closet here. So we'll go into the closet. You'll see what else is going on here. So it was funny when, uh, so right now, this is, uh, uh, this is wrapping paper. So wrapping paper, um, I do have a couple flowers up there. I was working on a project. I am not sure if I'm going to keep those or not because it's not something I'll probably be doing on the regular. But it, we had a baby shower and we were trying out new things and stuff. Um, stuff from my marathon. And then I have my ironing board in here. So for right now, this is it's working out great right here. So it's out of the way. Cord just goes in behind you here. And... Uh, yeah, it's great. Nobody has to see it. My I happen to be a nurse, so I iron my scrubs every single day. So I need an ironing board up at all times. Plus, this is a sewing room, so why wouldn't you have an ironing board up at all times? And then on this side, I have fabric, fabric, and more fabric. Some of these have like five things of fabric hanging on them. And what was so funny about it was that there's actually 85 pieces of fabric here. And I, my silly self was, was like, oh, I got all this extra room. Let me buy more hangers. And then I come to this thought, no, let's not buy more hangers. Let's make something with the fabric we have first. And so that's kind of a reward system I have for myself now. I am not allowed to buy more fabric unless I have an empty hanger. So I have an empty hanger. But I'm actually, I already have fabric for the next project I'm going to do. So that's my dealio with the fabric. If I don't have a hanger out of these 85 to put the material on, I'm not allowed to purchase the material until I do have a hanger. So it's kind of an incentive <laughs> to not keep accumulating and start using the stuff that I have. Because um, that's what I used to do before I had a sewing room was just buy it and put it somewhere and never do anything with it. I had a lot of good intentions. I just didn't have any action behind it. So, and then up top has got um, stuffing in these uh, containers. So I got stuffing and pillows up there. And there's foam right there, as you can see. Um, another cutting board. That one's a little antique so it doesn't cut as well as the other one I have down in the drawer. Oh, there's the flowers down there. Maybe I should put... Oh, actually, this was a project that I did. It was super cute, too. I'm not going to dig it out, though. But, uh, yeah, so this is the fan that we're going to put up, except for the other side. We're going to use the white side of the blades, so that will be flip, flipped over. But it's all chrome and everything, so that's going to go be our fan. And then this here is a 50-pound box of flaxseed for my flaxseed um, heating and cooling pads that I'm going to be working on. Um, 
these here are a couple dresses that I made for my granddaughters and then they outgrew them before we got them done. Darn children, how dare they grow. Yes, and then over here I just have some, I'm going to do my best to keep this stuff organized. I mean, it's a little, it's a little sloppy right this second, but we're getting there. Um, obviously I have more of these containers for the drawers as, as I need them. And then, so we have twine here, glitter. Um, this is a bunch of duct tape, hot glue, so ceiling stuff. I bought this because I thought it was going to be cute to sit some stuff on, and then I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it or not. But anyway, we obviously we painted it, as you can see. And then um, down here, I guess I'm going to this good stuff. I need to put this in a basket. There we go. All right. Um, in here... This is just household stuff that I don't know where else to put it right this second, but it's like command strips and stuff like that. Stuff that may end up going in the sewing room. You know, like I said, if I put up more hooks and stuff, I'm going to need the stuff that's in here. And then the one on the bottom is my hot glue gun. Um, everybody needs a hot glue gun. Um, this is uh, like macrame twine because I also macrame. I haven't done that in years either. And then this is, if I were to travel with my sewing machine. This is my travel bag for my sewing machine. This is the bag for my uh, serger. And then that one down there is got more stuff for the more, um, this one's got more tape for the, or the spool, the rolls for the Cricut. Where are we at? There we go. Yep, get you out of there. Yeah, and those are mason jars. Um, they're probably going to go out of here too because I did a little mason jar project um, for a baby shower. That's actually what's in here. Actually, I'm going to show you because uh, my son's girlfriend's mom wanted to do the same theme for our newest grandson's uh, first birthday. But I made these super cute honey jars. These are pint jars, and I made like 12 of those. And then um, over here on this side, we made... I made uh, quart ones that say Oh Baby on them. So I was originally going to just sell them because I was like, I'm never going to use these things again. But she is all about themes, and she's going to expand the Winnie the Pooh theme next year for his first birthday. And she asked me to hold on to those, so I will. So I'll probably just write his name on there, you know, first birthday idea or something like that. But, yeah, that's uh, what's going on. So... I will say, uh, so one of the plans is, so I have this space right here, and um, these are a couple pictures we gotta find places for in the, in the house. But this here wall, I am going to be bringing up a table, not a tabletop, but a worktop that's gonna be going up here. And I have a, like a heat press that people use for like heat press and t-shirts and stuff like that. Well, when I do some of my projects, I need things to really be pressed down, like, and also putting embellishments on and stuff like that. So I'm going to bring the heat press in here. And it's going to be right here on this wall here. So it's super heavy. So I haven't been able to get it upstairs. So um, that's where, what's going to go there. But uh, yeah, I think it's been great. So I think it's a great turnover. It's very relaxing here. I just come in here and start working, you know, on whatever. Or getting my sorting out ideas. But... I wanted to tell you, like I said, I have that empty hanger in there, and that's because I did this lovely. So I made my first project already since getting this all done, and I made my husband a little, you know, it's it's football season. So I made him this super cute fleece jacket. So, um... And I haven't sewn it forever, so I did have a couple things that I noticed that I would definitely improve upon. Um, or, you know, there's easier ways to go about it. But yeah, so he got this super cute fleece jacket. It's got zipper pockets here, zipper pocket here, another pocket here, another zipper pocket there. Full zipper goes all the way up to the neck. And so, yeah, so I took some football fleece and some brown fleece. And, you know, we live in bearish country, so... Hence the colors. But uh, yeah, I made that. And so then uh, I'll give you a little hint on my next project. So, you know, because Christmas is coming. And put that to the side. 
So Christmas is coming. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to take, so we're going to empty a hanger here. We're going to take this little guy down. And I'm going to invite you guys to see what my next project is going to be. So I have this quilted material here. Sorry, I got you running around with me here. I'm not trying to make anybody dizzy. But I'm going to take this material, only a purple piece of it, um, probably about this wide. It's probably like, oh, I don't know, 20 inches wide maybe. And then I'm going to take, um, let me see here. And look at this, we're emptying another hanger. How about that? All right. And then this here material. And then... So this is this is going to be the base. These these two things. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it on the red side. I haven't decided. The red side or the black side? Probably, probably the red side. I'm going to do it on. But anyway, I'm going to make my husband the cutest little um, advent calendar because he thinks in his mind that every morning when he gets up with his coffee, he needs to have a cookie in order to take his medicine. So he's on a he's on like one medication. And so I found this little Halloween cookie at the store and I go, yeah, bet. I said, this is a good size. So this is kind of like my example. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make little square uh, rectangles that would hold something about this size. And my hope is, and then what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna put them four across the little squares. And then at the very, so that'll, and then dot six down. And then what that'll do, at the bottom, I'm gonna make a big one. So that's gonna have like his final gift in there, you know, um, a really cool gift for him. And then I'm gonna put some Christmas ornament type decorations around it and stuff like that. So, and uh, I'm gonna use my Cricut maker. Hey, I'm gonna learn how to use it before then. And I'm going to put the Christmas numbers on here or the, the numbers of the month on here for that so stay tuned because that'll be hopefully my next video if it's just me by myself um i don't know if any of my followers my current followers are watching this but you might have noticed that we changed our name because my husband's retired and my husband is hilarious but anyway we're together a lot now <laughs> since he retired and i love it but so some people have told us you guys should do a YouTube together. So we're going to sometimes do that. So I changed the name from Grandma Patty to Salo e Yo because my husband's name is Solomon and so a lot of people call him Salo. And because you might be hearing some Spanish in there now and again because my husband's also Mexican. So he speaks Spanish sometimes. And so, yeah, um, we thought it'd be fun to take you guys along on some of our adventures. That'll be travel adventures and things like that on this channel as well. So, or just random day-to-day -day stuff. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. But, uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, sharing some projects with you guys in the future. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, this is Salo Eo, signing off.